Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part two of the Vogue 9319 sew along. Today we're going to be making this top from start to finish. So let's get started. Okay, so we're working on the top to start with and for each front section pin two front sections right sides together stitch front tie ends and lower edge trim seam allowance so basically we're going to do what it says on the tin stick the two sides together right sides together so are all around the edge um, I like to reduce my stitch length here and take a couple of diagonal stitches at the corners and because I find that that gives me sharper points when I turn it around so once we've done all that, trim off all the excess and turn it around and press, um, which is the next step. Turn right side out, press and baste all edges together. I'm getting ahead of myself, but never mind. Okay, so it's not easy to see because obviously black thread with black fabric, but this is the usual stitch length here. Then I reduce it to a smaller one. And when it comes to the point, I actually sew a couple of stitches on the diagonal and then small stitches back to normal and the same treatment up there and for me I just find that this gives me a nice point so the next thing I'm going to do is trim off all of this excess here and I'm also going to trim close to this line of stitching here so that again there's less bulk for me to turn the point through and I'm going to use my pinking shears to trim all of this off and then my small snips to get into this area here Okay, so I have pressed all of my edges. I am now going to baste together the raw edges. Usually I wouldn't bother with that, but this is quite a large bit to be wrestling with uh, if, it, if I'd left it unbasted. So I'm gonna do that. And that just means that I'm going to sew at 3 eighths of an inch because that is inside of the stitching line. So step number three is stitch darts in back, press fold of darts towards center. So I have marked on all my darts and I have pinned them. I'm going to start sewing at the bottom. I'm going to back stitch there. I'm going to sew off the end, leave long tails and tie them in a knot. And I'm going to do that for all four. So there's two at the waist and two at the shoulders. Okay, so I've back stitched at the start of my dart and then I've sewn off the end, leaving myself a nice long tail. So I'm just going to tie this into three knots. and then go around and trim off all the excess. So I'm now gonna go and press all the darts into the center. So into the neckline and the bottom ones into the center back. Okay, so the next step is number four and it's pin back to front at shoulders, having neck edges, extending five eighths of an inch stitch. Stitch again, quarter of an inch away in seam allowance, trim close to second line of stitching, press seam allowance towards the back. Well, I think you can all guess that I'm gonna French seam line. So I've got the wrong side of the back and I mean, because these are double layered, you just pick one that's the wrong side, but you wanna have your ties into the center. And then as it says, you want your neckline to be overlapping by five eighths of an inch. So the first line of stitching I'm gonna do is at a quarter of an inch, trim, press and sew, sew it again at three eighths of an inch and I will of course show you as I go. Okay, so I've sewn at a quarter of an inch. This line of stitching here is the basting that's holding the two fronts together. So this is my quarter of an inch seam, uh, as you can see here. Thank goodness for flowers on black. <laughs> and I am trimming the seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do that all the way along both shoulders. So once everything was trimmed, I then pressed everything so that the right sides were together. So I ended up with a press line like this. And I've then sewn at three eighths of an inch to encase the raw edges of the seam allowance. And I have pressed the seam towards the back. So the next thing that we want to do is the back neckline finish. So we want to stay stitch back neck edge. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm gonna do that at three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna um, stay stitch at three eighths of an inch the whole way around. Okay, so the next step is open out folded edge of bias tape and press lightly. Well, I don't bother doing that because I find I don't need to, so I'm gonna ignore that. Uh, next is pin bias tape to neck edge, pinning crease along seam line, having ends extending quarter of an inch beyond shoulder seam, 
stitch long centre, trim seam allowance even with bias tape. So now let's get it the right way up. Okay, so what it wants to do is it wants you to stitch wants you to stitch this crease here on the five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So we've just stay stitched our neckline and I will find it. <laughs> here we go. So we've just stay stitched our neckline and I did it at three eighths of an inch away because this particular piece of the bias tape is a quarter of an inch wide. So if I line up the edge of my bias tape with the line of stay stitching I've done, I will be stitching at the five eighths of an inch seam allowance here, which is what this bit calls for. And as it says, you want to extend a little bit over the edge of your bias of your neckline when you're stitching it down. It says quarter of an inch, but in all honesty, I'm going to give myself sort of you know nearly an inch to work with because I'd rather have too much than too little so I'm going to stitch it in the crease line there keeping the raw edge along the stay stitching line that we've just done and I'm going to stitch it on the front the right side of the garment so when I start my bias binding I like to pin it into the right place just because this stuff's slippery this stuff's slippery ish and I want to make sure that I'm getting it in the right place. So I start it off with one pin, but then I leave the actual binding on the reel and I leave the reel in my lap so that I, I don't cut a, a, a specific length of binding to work on each section. I just, as I say, leave it on the reel and do it this way. So I've started it with a pin in so I can get it in the right place to start with. And then I'm just gonna sew in this crease with the raw edge up against that stay stitching line there. Okay, so once I've sewn the bias binding on, I've then trimmed off the excess seam allowance and I've trimmed just inside of the three eighths of an inch stitching line. So, so I've trimmed off just inside the stitching line that I did. So the actual stitching line has come away with this. So the next thing that we need to do is step eight, which is turn bias tape inside a long seam, turning under ends even with shoulder seams, Press based outer edge of bias tape in place, stretching tape to fit on outside edge on outside stitch close to basted edge. Um, okay, I'm going to show you my interpretation of what that means. Okay, so the very first thing it wants you to do is fold the tape back on itself, and by that I mean this little edge here. It wants you to fold it in and then over on itself. So all the raw edges are enclosed. So that's what I've done there. And then this is my preferred method for uh, finishing bias binding. So I have my blind stitch foot on, which has a guide running down the middle. I've moved my needle all the way over to the left and I have folded the tape from the right side of the fabric round to the wrong side. So it encases that raw edge and I'm top stitching along this edge here to get this to all lie into place. So that's the first step. So after doing that step you should end up with something that looks like this so that the uh, neckline is still extending away from the shoulder seam but you have nicely finished edges. So the next step we want to do is press everything under and it's going to take some steam because this is a curved seam. So you want to have a small piece, a tiny tiny piece of the fabric showing on the inside of your garment. So I'm going to go press this and then show you what I mean. Okay, so I've pressed this under and the next thing that we want to do is stitch down this edge of the binding. Now, the pattern wants you to baste that edge into place and then from the right side top stitch along that basting that you've done so that you get it, you do catch all the bias binding. Personally, I am going to do it from the wrong side with my blind hem foot because I find that it gives me a really nice even look and the bobbin stitching on my machine looks really good so I don't have to worry about it not looking as good as the top stitching. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And again, I'm not going to pin it in place and I'm going to take it really slowly so I want to make sure that I get all the curves in but this all lies flat. And I'm going to start here 
back stitch and stitch all the way around this edge using this part of the foot as a guide to make sure that my stitching is even. Again, it's not pressed yet, but so that is what it looks like from the right side. And then this is, there we go, you can just about see it from the wrong side. So that's a nice neat finishing to the neckline. So I'm going to go and give that a press, but then the next step is number nine, pin back to front at sides, having back lower edge extending five eighths of an inch stitch. Stitch again a quarter of an inch away in seam allowance, trim close to the second line of stitching, press seam allowance towards back. Guess what I'm doing? I'm French seaming it. So I'm going to um, obviously keep the five eighths of an inch for the back hem uh, out of the stitching line, but I will show you as I go. Okay, so you probably know the drill by now, but we have the wrong side together and I have stitched at a quarter of an inch. And again, that other line of stitching you can see there is where I've basted the front pieces together because it is a double layer. So I am now going to trim this down by half. I'm going to press it and I'm going to sew it again at three eighths of an inch with the right sides together. Okay, so once I had sewn the quarter of an inch and trimmed it, I then pressed it so that the uh, right sides were together and I ended up with that press line there. I've then sewn it three eighths of an inch and pressed the seams towards the back. So we're going to be finishing the back hem a bit later, but the next step is to stitch on the sleeves. So we're going to stitch seam of sleeves, that's step 10, and obviously I'm going to French seam mine. Before I take my pattern piece off though, I just wanted to go through a few things. So the big circle is actually where the shoulder seam is on the pattern. So I have added a notch because I find that much easier to line it up. And then obviously you have your single notch for the front and your double notch for the back. So I'm gonna put all those notches in, then I am going to gather between those points whilst the sleeve, sleeve is still flat. And then I'm going to sew up the side seams. Okay, you guys know the drill by now. Wrong sides together, quarter of an inch, uh, trim, press, re-sew at three eighths of an inch. So I'm just about to finish trimming this. I'll press it and sew it. Okay, so I finished my French seam. I'm gonna press these ones towards the front. So towards the single notch. And I'm gonna do that because the side seams on the bodice are pressed towards the back. So this will allow me to nest the seams so that we don't end up with too much bulk in the underarm. Okay, so the next step once we've sewn the side seams and pressed them is to hem it. And that's a really good idea because whilst it's in a small thing like this, it's much easier to manipulate than if it was attached to the bodice. So we, the, the pattern asks us to stitch a quarter of an inch from lower edge of seat sleeve using long machine stitches as shown. And then turn up by five eighths of an inch hem at lower edge of sleeve, turning under a quarter of an inch on raw edge, pull thread to ease in fullness and stitch. Uh, yeah, you can definitely do it that way. I am however going to do a narrow rolled hem because I just find that easier. So I'll show you what I need to do for that. So the first thing will be stitch around the hem at three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've run a line of stitching at three eighths of an inch away from the raw edge. I have then taken this over to the ironing board and I've pressed it over so that there is, the stitching line is just on the inside uh, of the folded edge there. So the next thing that I'm going to do is stitch along this line of stitching again. And again, my blind hem foot comes into play because there is this guide down the middle so I can use that up against the edge and I have my needle all the way over to the left so that's going to run me another line of stitching along there which I can then trim to. So the next step for me is to trim off the excess so I've got about a quarter of an inch from the folded edge left and so I've trimmed all of that away and the next thing I'm going to do is press that folded edge in again to cover the raw edge so I can then stitch it down. Okay so I have pressed up that so that, uh, I have pressed up the hem so that the folded edge is now on the inside and the raw edge is completely concealed so I'm going to stitch that down from the wrong side with my blind hem foot. I need to give it a good press but that is my hem finished so the next thing that I want to do is attach 
the sleeve to the bodice. Right, so I'm going to run some gathering stitches from the small circle, which you can just about see marked there, to the other small circle, which is here. So I'm going to run gathering stitches between the two. I'm going to run them at three eighths of an inch and then also three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to use the longest stitch length that my machine will go to. So tw step 12 is with right sides together, pin sleeve into armhole, edge matching notches, underarm seams, small circle and large circle to shoulder seam, baste, stitch, stitch again quarter of an inch away in seam allowance, trim close to second stitching, press seam allowance flat, turn seam allowance towards sleeves. I'm going to French seam it because, you know, of course I am. So what I want to do is pin the sleeve to the bodice with the wrong sides together. Okay, so I have pinned the sleeve in. This is the body, this is the sleeve here. And you wanna work with the sleeve side, side up when you're sewing your sleeve in. I have matched the underarm seam, I have matched the single notches for the front and the double notches for the back. I have matched the large circle which I just clipped into at the shoulder seam and then uh, it doesn't say for you to add gathering stitches to the top of this sh the shoulder but the top of the sleeve but there is a little bit of easing in that you need to do and I find that the gathering just makes that so much easier. So the first thing that we need to do is sew this seam in at a quarter of an inch the entire way around and don't worry too much about any puckers that you might get in that seam because the the next one that we're going to do is going to be sewing in between the rows of gathering stitches which will even things out. So I'm going to sew the whole way around with the sleeve side facing up under the needle and I'm going to sew the whole way around at a quarter of an inch. So I have sewn my seam in at a quarter of an inch so I'm now going to go and trim that the whole way around down to one eighth of an inch then I'm going to press it so that the right sides are together so that I can then sew the final seam. So I'm going to trim first then press. So I've sewn the final line of stitching at 3 eighths of an inch which is going to have enclosed all the raw edges. Now as you can see here there is a little bit of puckering but this is a line of gathering stitching and so is that so I'm going to remove both of those and then turn it out and give the sleeve a gentle press with the, sleeve al uh, the seam allowance going towards the sleeve. So the final step is number 13, finish lower edge of back with 5 eighths of an inch, narrow hem, turning under ends even with side seams. So that is this part here, so we need to turn that up and up again so that it is even with this hem here, and then that will be our top finished. Uh, I ran a line of stitching at 3 eighths of an inch, and then I have pressed it so that the stitching is right on the folded edge. And then I've pressed that hem up again so that the edges are level with the front. So I'm going to pin this down and then I'm going to stitch it down from, and I'm going to stitch it from the wrong side. And again, I'm going to use my blind hem foot to get a nice straight line of stitching. If you have any questions at all please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video, if you have please give it a thumbs up, if you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!